Well, hello everyone. Just getting some materials together here. Welcome to another Wednesday live stream virtual art hive here on the Living Room Community Art Studios page. The Living Room Community Art Studios page. Am I saying it right? It's been so long. It's been so long. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. And hello, welcome, Shelly. Good to see you out there. Thank you for joining us today, everyone. It's a, it's another week. It's another week in strange, uncertain times. And I'm so glad that you're here, that you're out there creating, creating with me, doing your own thing. Um, for those of you who might be tuning in today for the first time, or maybe you haven't tuned in for a while, I'll just remind you what this is all about. This is a time where we gather, we hang out, we make art or not make art. We essentially, all of us in whatever way, we contribute to that creative energy, the creative atmosphere of this space, which for us these days is uh, acting like the Living Room Community Art Studio since we can't gather together in person to be with one another, to create with one another. Hello, Courtney, welcome. So while you're here spending time with us, I invite you to make art. I invite you to work on projects maybe that you have put aside, things you've been wanting to get back to but haven't found the time to. Maybe you'd like to experiment and try something new. Now's the time to do that. Gather whatever supplies you have on hand. They can be anything you like. It can be making art with uh, markers, pens, highlighters, pencils. It can be knitting, crocheting, collaging, writing. It can be painting all the things you can think of, any of the things you can think of, anything that you want to do today, we invite you to do that along with us. I myself am going, going to be experimenting doing some uh, collage, some mixed media collage, mixing and matching a whole bunch of different items I have around the studio today. Uh, but other folks may not feel like doing that and that's okay. If you are not in the mood to make art today, perhaps, perhaps all you want to do is hang out and be a part of the community and that creative energy, you're more than welcome to. You can listen and watch and do whatever you feel like doing. Maybe that is, you know, washing the dishes or doing your homework. I know there's a lot of students out there around this time who are feeling the crunch of all the projects, all the deadlines coming up. And you know what? If you can spare a few moments just to give yourself some time to create, to connect, or to appreciate the creation, the making that is happening, that's all good. I applaud you for making time for yourself in that small way. So no judgment today, no perfection allowed. Whatever you feel like working on and the way you feel like working on it, just do that. I know that we're all just here. We're all kind of experiencing similar things. Um, we're apart from one another, but we don't have to be alone all the time. Not if we don't want to. So use this time to connect, to say hi, to chat, to meet other people who are participating in the chat. Maybe you want to share links or pictures to what you're working on at home. You're more than welcome to do that. And of course, we will always have a show and tell post after the live stream. So if you want to upload specific things there, you can. And we can appreciate all the wonderful artsy goodness all over again. And let's see, what, what are folks working on today? Shelly is sorting out pages of magazines to find collage materials. Excellent. I'm going to be doing a bit of the same. So we're going to be working on a similar kind of thing. Um, I know that Courtney's watching. Courtney, if you're working on something, let, you let us know too. It's always nice to, to have an idea of what people are creating at home. And that way, um, at least speaking for myself, I feel a little less alone and more like we used to when we were in the studio space, sharing tables with one another, spilling coffee all over the place. Speaking of coffee, Excellent. <laughs> now, I'm going to get to work too, looking for some supplies just like Shelly. I'm going to just switch over here. That's good. That's good. Now, I have a handy file, a handy dandy file that I keep on hand. I don't know if anyone else out there does. Hello, Vanna. How are you doing? It's good to see you here. What are you working on today, Vanna? All right. I've got some collage materials here. Whenever I'm going through magazines or maybe I stumble across different things, sometimes they're advertisements or flyers. If there's an image there that stands out that speaks to me in some way, I tear it out, I cut it out, and then I put it in the file. That way, 
I know it's there and I can search for it later on without having to flip through all of those magazines all over again. Oh, Emily, lovely. Emily, hello, Emily. Oh, it's so good to know you're out there. Emily is listening while, oh, well, Emily marks blog posts again. Sit down, you're having a steep tea along with it. Excellent. Yeah, you don't have to have a coffee just because I'm having a coffee. You make yourself comfortable wherever you are. Do what you need to do to feel good, to have a good afternoon. Because I think, yeah, we're all feeling it. It's been a bit of a week and we're not even all the way through. And Courtney is working on making stuff to put on a vision board. Excellent. That you'll take, oh, that you will take with you on Saturday or I'm not sure. I'm, that, I'd love to learn how that vision board is coming about. Vision boards are really interesting thing. And I think it's interesting. There's a lot of folks that are maybe doing some similar things out there working on the, like a collage oriented activity. I don't know what this collage I'm making is going to be about. I have a feeling, I don't know if it'll be a vision board exactly, but I think, I think I want it to say something that maybe I'm having a difficult time saying with words. Does that make sense folks? And Vanna, oh, Vanna is missing around, oh, messing around, I'm thinking, messing around with some game assets from Friday Night Funkin' so I can change the look of some of the characters. Vanna, that's awesome. I don't know that game. I'm not a huge gamer myself. However, one of my students is starting a new activity. Um, she's gonna share a video about it tomorrow, Thursday, on the Facebook page that you might be interested in. And lots of folks might be interested in. It's called a comfort character check. Have you folks heard about that? Comfort characters? Oh, Courtney's making her vision board on Saturday. Got it now. Got it, got it, got it. But you can use this time to explore, to gather materials and all of that wonderful thing. And Courtney doesn't only have a vision page. You have a vision book, not a board, a whole book. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. Why settle for one board when you can have a whole book of visions? How lovely. <laughs> Hello, Courtney. How you doing? Good to see you here. And what else do we have? Yes, returning to that. So Thursdays, Daniel will be hosting an activity called Comfort Character Check. And basically it's uh, when you have characters from books or games or um, films or perhaps even songs, video games, all of those things. They're characters that we perhaps identify with or love or wish we were in real life, which we had as a friend in real life. There's a lot of interesting stuff to explore there. Danielle will explain it so much better than I can. So I'll just invite you to tune in tomorrow, Thursday on Facebook to learn all about that activity. It'll kick off officially next week. Interesting. So Vanna, you've heard of comfort characters, but don't know exactly how they work. You know what? It sounds like we're all learning about this, but I love the idea. I think each one of us in our own way probably has, you know, those characters that we love, that we turn to for inspiration or, or comfort or when we want to feel something in, my, in ourselves that they feel or they demonstrate in the stories that they're telling. I think it will be a really interesting exercise. I can't wait for people to participate and let us know what you think. Oh, there's a good quote. We cannot solve our problems wearing the same shoes we wore in creating them. Hmm, interesting that that one jumped out at me, isn't it, folks? I'm going to put that aside. That's Lee Weinrob, I believe, who said that. And fantastic. So yes, all the, all the wonderful things that people are creating. We have vision books. We have vision boards. We have collages. If people want to share what they're working on, feel free. Go ahead. We have people marking. We have teachers marking uh, blog posts, which in my day, I don't know, that was not, not a thing. Students, if you're out there, how do you enjoy the transition to submitting things in blog posts rather than essays? I think that would be a really interesting challenge, actually. I think I might enjoy that more than writing an essay. Hmm, interesting. It feels like more of a conversation with your professor or your teacher. I wonder. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. It looks like I'm going to see pictures of Courtney's, Courtney's vision book. Fantastic. And if you want to share pictures today with folks in the show and tell, feel free. So what have I here? I've got some of those, the plaster. Remember when I made the plaster sort of, um, what do you call this? What do, you, what do I call this? That's a good question. 
I used uh, the plaster and stencils to create interesting surfaces to work on. That was a few weeks ago now, but I spent some time just, you know, using some leftover paints to add color and just highlight some of the textures that were there. And I'm still not sure what to do with them, but I do feel called to kind of integrate them into something, you know, like maybe a larger collage piece, maybe play with shapes in a collage. That's something that Laura Brown does really, really well in her collage pieces. It's not just about the image, but sometimes about the shapes that she makes out of the pages. So you're playing with the colors and the patterns on the page. And Nicole, hello, Nicole. Nicole says, right now I'm trying to assemble something with no real instructions. Oh, that sounds fun. That sounds exciting. You're just going by intuition. I hope it's not, a, is it something from, like as a flat pack kind of thing? You're just missing one screw or maybe you have one screw too many and you don't know where it's supposed to be. Let us know how that's going. Keep us up to date. Oh, Momo. Hello, Momo. And happy belated birthday, Momo. Momo says, I was working on a collage yesterday, so I have a lot of cuttings. And yes, I remembered the plaster. That was fun. It was. It's good to get the dirty sometimes when you're making art. It's a little messy. I love the texture too. I'm a big, big fan of texture. I'm Wendy. Hello, Wendy. Welcome. Oh, it's lovely to, that everyone is here. Okay. I've obviously got a lot of stuff here that I've been saving up over time. Oh, maybe I'll integrate that into one of them as well. Hmm. Oh, maybe there's something I can do with this piece. I've been waiting a while to do something with that piece. Maybe there's something about circles, spirals, holes, that idea of containment structure within that beautiful form. All right then. I am going to, I'll put those aside with those on top. Maybe I should begin with a circle form as well. Hmm, what do I have? Do I have, I'll put my cookie tin lid away. What do I have? What do I have? Oh, I have that. Just leaning out of frame, let's see. Grab that palette. Not exactly a circle, but it gets me close. And if folks want to chat just about how they're doing as well, how you're coping, perhaps how you've been, feel free to share that as well. We can take this time just to check in with one another. Maybe provide a little support for one another if we need it. Just remind one another that we're not alone. What do we have there? Excellent. I'll play within that shape. And Nicole offering some exclam ex <laughs> exclamation, an exclaimed explanation about her, uh, what she's working on. It's a stand. You're putting a stand together, but you have no idea what, <laughs> what are the pieces and what are just plastic bits to hold things together. Yeah, that's a whole other form of art, isn't it? The art of installing and put like the, the art of structure, the art of structure. <laughs> I'm afraid to say that I get, I'm pretty impatient when it comes to that kind of project. And although I try to keep all the bits and pieces together, inevitably, there's always something missing. And usually I find it a couple of weeks later. Sometimes my cats take it away as I'm working on it and I don't notice. Oh, hello, hello, Carlos, welcome. Carlos saying, <laughs> cello, cello, y'all. Hope you're all safe and well on this sunny, snowy, snunny <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> it is, it's a snunny kind of day, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's a new word, Carlos, I like it. I like it. Let me remove some of the words there. I might use some of that print. But for now, and Vanna, let's see, 
Oh, and Courtney, I'm going to check back in with you there. Courtney just, uh, Courtney participated in the, was it the, what day is it today? Today's Wednesday. So I think it was maybe the Tuesday Zoom workshop that you participated in with Caitlin. And you're saying that it was amazing. That's awesome. Of course it's amazing because Caitlin's amazing. And next Tuesday we have Catherine Belcanis uh, hosting the, uh, the Tuesday night wellness workshop Zoom. And Catherine is equally as amazing. You're going to love Catherine. Sometimes we call her Cat V. So when you hear me chatting about Cat V, that's who I'm talking about. Cat V and Caitlin will be trading off Tuesdays in the wellness workshops and just giving people an opportunity to drop by and spend, you know, take care of themselves, give themselves time and space to take care of themselves in a creative way. And it feels like it was, it was really good for Courtney. That's amazing. That's amazing. I I'm, I I'm can't wait to hear from Caitlin how it went too, just from her perspective, because these are all new things that we're trying. And Vanna's saying, just waiting for next quadmester to start tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow, fingers quad. I was going to say fingers quast. Quast for the quadmaster. Um, quadmester, rather. You are the quadmaster of your quadmester, though, so I'll give you that. But fingers crossed, yeah. Uh, I'll be fully online, Vanna says, so I don't have to worry about going inside the school, which is good. I know there are a lot of students today worrying about what's up for them as far as, you know, getting going back into their high schools or their colleges. I think um, I'm not sure what the announcement was, to tell you the truth. Has anyone heard our folks in the, the GTA heading back? It's an interesting time, but no matter what. You know, as much as you can, continue to take care of yourself and make the choices that are right for you. It sounds like, Vanna, you find yourself in a really good place and have found a way of studying that works for you. And I am so happy about that because studying, I mean, well, I love learning. I love learning. But it's hard to learn when you're feeling anxious, isn't it? It's hard to learn or absorb anything when you're feeling scared. So I'm so glad that you're not, that you're in a good place with that because you're, you're pretty brilliant too. And Shelly saying, okay, Shelly's saying I'm leaving because there are people who haven't been welcomed and I feel that if some people get welcomed, others should too. Interesting, Shelly. Now, if I might, you know, if you've left, that's okay. You might absorb this later. It's important to take care of you. That's really important. But we welcome people as we can, as much as we can, if they're sharing space with us during the live stream. Those who maybe don't uh, don't get the chance to get welcomed. I'm sure it's not intentionally. It's not an intentional oversight. I know on my part, for example, I can only see the people who are participating in the chat. So if folks are just watching, you folks out there might be able to see who's logging on to watch. Um, you might welcome them if you want to. You're absolutely welcome to. But I know some people like watching from a distance. They don't necessarily want to be seen or heard. They just want to appreciate all the goodness from where they're at. So for those folks, you are welcome to just listen in or watch, have us on in the background. That's okay. You might stay for a few minutes. You might stay for the whole hour and a half, whatever works for you. But know that the intention is to welcome folks and folks like Shelly are out there wanting, doing their best to make this space warm and welcoming and supportive for everyone who's here. But you know what? It's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to miss things out sometimes. We're all human. We're all just doing our best. And if you'd like to be welcomed, well, hey, you can always just say that. What's wrong with just saying that? Saying, I need somebody to welcome me. I want to be welcomed today. Could I have a little bit of extra welcome love? I know there are days where I have to do that myself. It's okay to ask for what you need. It's okay. And like me, I I can't read people's minds. I don't know if I would want to, but I can't. So sometimes I need a little help in that area. If there are folks who want to be seen and heard, if there are folks who need a little extra love, and if you can find that courage in your heart just to ask for us, let us know what you need and we'll do our best to try and be there for you. We may not always be able to supply it for you because we're only human, but we do our best. And Momo says, hello, everybody. So that's a, that's a lovely little way to just sum it up all there. Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome, everyone. Ryan says, what's up? What up? <laughs> I'm stealing like all good artists, Ryan. That's what I'm doing. I would have conversations with Ryan about that. All good artists steal. And he's never let me forget it. 
And Momo says, please feel welcome. We're all here for each other. And yep, Momo, I couldn't agree more. We're all here for each other in the way that we can, in the way that we can be, right? It's not always easy. But know that if you are here, we appreciate you being here. I think that's a given. And Courtney is saying, yes, it was referring to the Zoom workshop that she was a part of, the Tuesday wellness workshop. So glad. Oh, and Momo, yes, I do have a new mug. <laughs> I did a little bit of a mug tidy up, and I found this in the back of the cupboard. And it's just really nice, and it's full of spring to me, that idea of the blues and the pinks, and I love it. Light, bright, colors to wake me up, colors to make me feel warm. But warm in a spring way. Not quite ready for summer yet. Not quite ready for tropical. But I love, isn't it? Like, it's not even, we haven't even, we've just begun February. And I'm already thinking about spring. I think that says something. And Vanna says, I, I just know that I probably shouldn't go anywhere with lots of people since my parents are frontline workers. So just referring again back to that message of safety and security. Absolutely. There are a lot of people out there doing good work, essential work for everyone. So many different kinds of people, from the folks who make your coffee at Tim Hortons to people working in grocery stores, hospitals, buses, packaging plants, processing. You know, there's so many parts of our lives that we've never considered to be essential before that I think we're beginning to recognize just how valuable they are, how interconnected we all are as well. And let's see. And Shelly says, my friend was in the chat but felt unwelcome. Hmm, interesting. You know what? It's always you can always check in with them a little later to see if that's in fact how they felt. I know sometimes people just want to watch, but they don't necessarily want to be seen or heard. I know I'm like that sometimes. I skulk. That's what I call it. I kind of skulk in the background of an event. Maybe it's a, a Facebook live or something like that. And sometimes I just like listening to it while I'm doing other things and having my own space. And that's okay. And sometimes I think people like watching or listening to this in the same way. So, you know what, maybe, I don't know, that's, you know, you've just given me something really interesting to think about, Shelley, about how we welcome people. And maybe we can welcome everyone, but maybe welcome the people who are joining the chat, perhaps, and invite people. If you want to be welcomed, if you want us to give you a shout out, participate in the chat online, and we will, we will say hello to you. We will do all the things. But Shelly, you've given me something really interesting to think about there. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll get back to everyone about that. Hmm. What else do we need here? Let's see. And <laughs> Nicole says, thanks for the assembly support. It came with screws, but they're too short. Oh no. And Jamie, oh Jamie, hello Jamie. Jamie Harper saying, thank you for all you do. Jamie, can you do me a huge favor and give yourself a little introduction here? Because I'm, I'm going to try, but I know there are plenty of folks out there who'd love to know what you're working on. Um, so I'll start. You can fill in the gaps. So Jamie works for this amazing organization called the Durham Alliance Outreach. Yes, have I got it right so far? And they work with uh, LGBTQ plus communities, members in Durham region to provide support and connection, especially during this time when people are finding it very hard and difficult and are separated from one another and can't gather in the way that they used to. Um, the DAO, the DAO has all sorts of amazing programming on right now. If you're someone out there who's looking to connect, who's looking for a little additional support and wellness in your life with a community of care that understands what it's like, um, where you won't, won't have to explain yourself, explain who you are, uh, how you identify, just to know that you're accepted, this is a great organization to turn to. So the Durham Alliance Outreach. Jamie, you could even throw up something in the chat there so folks can go and visit and learn all about you. And I, what I like about them as well is they work with all ages. So there's a good range. There's something in there for everyone who needs that support. And Emily sends, oh, lovely. Emily is sending out hugs to everyone who needs them. Today started out hard for a lot of folks. I saw it in my student, students' emails this morning and I only made it to 9.30 before crying. So hugs all around. Yeah, these are interesting times. That's, that's what can be said. And 
I think sometimes, at least for me, I forget. I start, it gets easy to normalize everything that's happening around us because we have to, right? We have to, we have to continue every day. We have to do what we do to get by. But then it's also easy to sort of sideline all those little tiny feelings we might be having that are sending us signals to take a break, to be gentle with ourselves, to reach out for support when we need it, connect, just to ask for what we need from those who can provide it or who can connect us with people who can provide that support. We're so busy normalizing things so that we can pretend or continue in a lot of cases to keep on going and do what we need to do for others that we forget to do what we need to do for ourselves. Um, I, I hear that and there's, it's, these are not normal times. That's it. These are not normal times. So making space in our lives for that and our minds and our hearts for that recognition that this isn't normal, but it will be part of how we live for the next little while. So what can we do to bring more light and wellness and kindness, not in like not only into the lives of others, but into our own lives. And I think crying is a really good, healthy step. Actually, I love crying. I've been crying a lot lately and I'm okay, right? Because you can cry, you can fall apart and still be okay. I think that's something that maybe all of us can remember or try to remember. And another reason why I created I don't know if folks saw those stickers, the new stickers that we have for the Free Crying Society. Might also have some stickers out there for the Free Crying Collective, the Public Crying League. I think we're starting a movement here just to remind folks that it's okay to cry. At 9.30, that's pretty... <laughs> that's straight out of the gate, isn't it? I think that just signals how, how people are doing their best in times like these. We do our best and that's all we can do. That's all we can do. And Courtney's saying, I want to wear flip-flops ASAP. So back to the summer. Yeah, I know some of you folks, some of like me, the warmth, you're, you're craving that warmth again. I'm right there with you. And Amanda, hello, Amanda. Amanda saying, I miss my living room crew. Well, you're still a part of the living room crew. You're here. Right? You're here. How's it going, Amanda? And what are you working on? Or what are you wanting to work on? What are the creative things that you're craving right now? And maybe, who knows, maybe we can get you inspired, get you started on something. And Danielle, hello, Danielle. So Danielle is right there. Danielle is the person who will be explaining all about her comfort character project tomorrow on Facebook. I think it'll happen every week, Thursday, 11 a.m. You can just show up and type in your characters and it's lovely. Um, and who knows how it will grow. And then we have a question from, hello, Marie. Um, welcome, 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 welcome. Marie saying, my question is not related to the discussion, but who could tell me how to have this camera set up view? Like uh, the camera and the speaker appearing on the side with the decor around, I'm a school teacher, that would be so cool. Okay, so this is something, um, my, my, I'm really lucky, I have a partner who's a filmmaker, and an editor and all those kind of wonderful things. He's helped me set this up. We're, it's not as difficult as it seems, um, but we will be, I think we are going to be having, um, Mama, what do we call it? A skill sharing session. That's what we call it in Art Hive Land, where Anthony will be explaining. He might even create uh, a kind of, like a video to help people set it up. Because in short, what we do is we have an external webcam uh, mounted on an arm. So you could use a lot of different things like a ring light. There's a really, there's a, a couple of really awesome ring light kits out there that you can purchase that aren't that expensive that have like flexible arms so that you can have a camera, an external camera or your phone mounted on one thing and then the light on the other to give whatever you're working on uh, some addi an additional boost. And then we work through a free software program online called OBS, Open Broadcasting Open Broadcasting Source or Open Broadcasting System. One of those things. So in short, it's a combination of utilizing those those tools uh, with your laptop. Um, 
It's not my area of expertise, but Anthony is almost ready to share something with the community. What we'll do, I suppose, is we will put out an event, a Facebook event for that when we're ready, and then everyone can come and learn uh, because it's kind of fun. And once you get the hang of it, it's really easy to set up I mean, you can add on all sorts of extra bells and whistles like we have. We have some different cameras that we use from time to time for different things we're shooting. Uh, but really, I think a laptop and an external webcam and a ring light with two arms, a ring light with an arm that can also hold onto a camera, that's, uh, that's what you're looking for to start. I hope that helps as a little starter. But in short, keep an eye out. We'll be uh, posting a Facebook event about that skill sharing hopefully sometime before the end of February, because I know a lot of folks have been asking and I can't take credit for it. It's all, this is all Anthony Granny. And Jamie, excellent, saying Durham Alliance Outreach. Excellent. So there's a, a website there in the chat that you can follow if you'd like to learn more or connect with this amazing organization. And they, so we have a workshop coming up with them. I'm going to be hosting a workshop with Durham Alliance Outreach and they are sharing art kits for this workshop. So Jamie's saying we currently, we've handed out 18 art kits to people and calm, I think you have some calming kits still hanging around as well too. But keep things calm and show off your artistic sides with these specially tailored kits for anybody to enjoy. Lovely. Yeah, and that's what, Jamie, they want you to see what you can do with these art kits, what you can create to express yourself, show the world who you are. Um, we'll be hosting a live event with the Living Room Community in partnership with, yep, in partnership with the Living Room Community Art Studio. To sign up for it, you can find the details here. And Jamie has included the Facebook event. Ah, I, you know what, that's great. There's a Facebook event. I will share that on our page as well. So folks can tune in, join, um, get these art kits, create a relationship with this amazing organization so that you can support yourself moving forward. You might have friends who might be interested in learning more about this group. Uh, they're awesome. And, uh, yeah, so it's the event. Let's see, the event is near the bottom of the You Are Not Alone's page. Supply kits are free of charge, limited, but while supplies last. And another explanation from Jamie. So saying, Durham Alliance Outreach is supported by the Government of Canada's Emergency Community Support Fund through Community Foundations of Canada and Durham Community Foundation. Whew, that's a blurb. I didn't really do it justice, but visit their site, visit the event. If you are a part of the LGBTQ plus community, if you are friends or family of someone and so, uh, who is, there are so many amazing resources out there. You don't have to be alone. And uh, I was, I know I was thrilled to learn about this organization in Durham region. So check it out. Carlos says, oh, lovely. So this is, I think, a response to Shelly. So, and you know, sorry your friend felt unwelcome. If it helps, the very first thing I see when I log in is welcome to the pop-up art studio. And that encompasses a general welcome. But if your friend came to the chat needing something specific, I'm sorry that they felt unwelcome within their living room family. I think we do our best to make folks feel welcome. But sometimes we, yeah, we may not always, always welcome at the immediate moment that it's needed. I'm sorry that happened to your friend. Maybe you could chat with them, ask what they needed and what was missing. So we work together to support folks but to get all a uh, high school musical. Carlos, you can get high school musical anytime you like. I love that. Um, we're all in this together. So sending welcome high fives to your friend from afar. Exactly. It's difficult and we're all, you know, we're just, we're just humans, fragile, beautiful, complicated, weird and delightful human beings. And it's okay. It's okay to feel what you need to feel. I think that's something to remember as well. It's okay to feel what you need to feel and do what you need to do to help yourself through this day, at this moment, whatever it might be and whoever you might be. And, uh, oh, <laughs> excellent. So Laura's tagging, tagging in Anthony Granny. So that's good. I should tag in Anthony Granny. Absolutely. Thank you, Laura, for that. And it's, yeah, Courtney's saying go, the, oh, it's okay to cry club. Another shout out for the, it's okay to cry club, which is lovely. What do I want here? Do I want this underneath? I think I just need to get something down on the page. <laughs> and Momo saying yes. So this is in response to Marie as well. Yes to the Skillshare. Do I want this moon there? Maybe this moon doesn't belong there anymore. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. And Amanda... 
I need, Amanda says, I need canvases to draw and use your pastels. Okay, okay, okay. So in the meantime, before we have the capacity to get out there and share supplies on an, um, like in a big way, what we're doing is during the live streams, we're shouting out to community members. If you live, um, so for example, like um, if, you, if you live in Durham region and you know someone else in the stream who's chatting, who needs supplies, who also lives in Durham region, maybe you have supplies that they can use, you know, give, a, give Amanda a tag and let her know. So if anyone else out there has canvases or Amanda, would you be open to sketchbooks or pads of paper to use with your pastels as well? Uh, just tag Amanda and let her know and maybe uh, a drop off or a swap can be arranged of some kind. I know community is a powerful, powerful resource and we are working towards getting out there and bringing supplies to folks, but it's going to be a little while yet. Let's see. Oh, Courtney's asking for the art kit from Jamie. Is that what you're asking for? Saying, how do I get one? I will pay for one. Um, you know what? That's a conversation to have with Jamie, but I know that this is for this workshop uh, in particular. But I know there are other people delivering and making art kits out there as well. So for example, I know the Robert McLaughlin Art Gallery, they had a couple of workshops where they had art kits that were put together. Um, different organizations are doing other really, really cool things to help meet, meet the needs of the community. Keep an eye out um, and visit their website. So the Robert McLaughlin Art Gallery is one. I'm thinking some of the art stores might also have, you know, grab and go art kits that they've created. I know we usually like get like usually get some supplies from Curry's art store, which is one of our local art stores, but I know above ground art supplies also uh, they do a, they have a really great delivery system. But I can't even see that. I can't even see the circle I made. I'll do it from the other side. Let's see. And Shelly's saying, I am back. Excellent. Good to have you back, Shelly. Good to have you back. And I applaud you for taking care of yourself, doing what you needed to do in the moment. Sometimes stepping away is what you need, right? In this situation and a lot of situations, sometimes just giving yourself a bit of perspective, taking a breath is exactly the right thing to do for yourself. And so for anyone else out there who might be in need of the same thing, please feel free to give yourself that time. Maybe you need to step away. Maybe you need to make a snack. Maybe you need to put the kettle on, put on a warm sweater, whatever feels right for you. And it is a beautiful, snunny day out there, as Carlos was saying, at least here in Durham region. So perhaps even sticking your head outside to get some fresh air and a look at the beautiful sky that's above us. And that is a beautiful sky that we're all sharing. That's something I like to remember too these days, wherever we may be. Oh, and Carlos is saying, I'm loving this art piece, really. It's like a vinyl disc playing amidst the sunlight. Oh my, oh my, a very specific interpretation for me today. I'm vibing it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Why, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think we're gonna play with these circles. And Amanda saying, yes, that would be lovely. So if anyone out there has perhaps an extra sketchbook or some canvases um, that they're not using and you'd like to figure out a way to get them to Amanda, you can just tag and maybe arrange a place to drop them off or, you know, a little, little drop off and dash kind of moment. I know this community is resourceful. Not only the Durham Region community, but the creative community. That's, oh, hello. I'm just going to play with circles today. That's what's going to happen. As of now, there we go. Artists. What is it? I remember Catherine Richards saying this. Catherine Richards, who's one of our fabulous Culture Counts uh, City of Oshawa people. What does she say? She says, artists do things. We do things, which I think is another nice way of saying we get things done. You may not get things done in the way that's uh, expected, in a way that <laughs> you 
you know what? We just, we do things. We get things done. I'm going to choose to interpret we do things in the most positive light possible. And Courtney's saying, no, Nicole. Yes, hello, Courtney. There is Courtney there. But Nicole's saying, I finished another needle. Oh, excellent. I finished another needle felted Shiba Inu. Rosemary and I have been inspiring each other. She tried out glass eyes for the first time. Now, what are glass eyes again? I don't think I know. Did you explain this before and I forgot? I know there's a lot of different art uh, forms popping up, different kits that have to do with gems and little sparkly things. Mm. And maybe glass eyes are the same. Did you mention glass eyes? And I've forgotten what they are. I apologize. I usually don't layer things like this, but I'm feeling the need just to get stuff down. And while I'm here, can I find that embossing tool? Let's see. I'm glad you're working on the needle felting still. It's it's a super fun thing to do. I've not gotten back to it in, as much as I'd want to after that initial uh, live stream that I did with you folks where I just dove in and gave it a go. Um, but I am looking forward to returning to it. I think too, as I was mentioning to Wendy, I think it was, was it the last live stream or the one before that where um, I've been trying to mend things and patch things up rather than throwing them away or just, you know, when my clothes, when my pants, my jeans get a hole in them or my sweater gets a little tear, I'm, I'm kind of tired of disposing of them. I'm tired of contributing to just like the masses of trash we have out there. But I also, I, I want to reclaim them somehow. I want to live more artfully and mindfully in all the ways. So I have been practicing mending things. Um, definitely not as good as some of the professionals out there who can do it so you don't even notice it. Mine, I'm very much a part of the visible mending community. So you will see the patches, you will see the stitches, you will see the love that goes into it. Um, but as I was saying to Wendy a couple of weeks ago, I'm very excited about exploring needle felting as a way to mend clothes. So either needle felting on top of things that are wool or uh, fabrics that are, re are receptive to the wool uh, in, in needle felting, or perhaps making patches that I can apply onto things. I don't know. I think it's an interesting... Uh, There you go. You don't have an embossing tool? Just use the end of a paintbrush. And I do have an embossing tool. That's the frustrating thing. It's here somewhere on this desk, somewhere <laughs> in the creative clutter. And what can I do here? Now this won't absorb anything. So I'm thinking markers will be the trick. Yeah, I love working with foil. Haven't done it in a long time. I remember the first time, I think it was in maybe kindergarten, maybe grade one or two, where we made, we took jars and we covered them in foil and then embossed them. Well, it, like, yeah, we I think we glued string onto the jars, then covered the jars with foil and then painted over the foil to give a kind of tarnished, um, yeah, tarnished look. And it, it was really lovely, like a, a pute, like an iron, what is it? not silver sterling, the pewter kind of look. It was great. Oh, excellent. So Emily's saying, I have needle felting supplies I can drop off to you. Whoa, is that to me or to other folks in the community who need it? You know what? It looks like there are some needle felting supplies out there. And is that because you're no longer needle felting or you just have an abundance of supplies that you'd like to share? I'm sure there's someone out there that would adore, that would love to have that. And Momo saying, yes, men yeah, mending things make uh, feels awesome. I'm not a sewer, question mark. Is that even a word? Absolutely. Plus, we're artists, so we can make up words. Unless you're writing a paper or a blog for school, and then maybe your professors or teachers won't appreciate the made-up words. But for here, go for it. It's a snunny day, and we're just enjoying all the creativity in all its forms. <laughs> so Momo says, I'm not a sewer, uh, but it's so satisfying. 
Momo turned an old lunch bag into a Chemex cozy for your coffee. What? Uh, again, I took, it only took me, what, 45 minutes for this to come up, but picture, please? I'd love to see that in the show and tell if you want to share it. Hmm. Absolutely. There's so many things that can be repurposed. I'm even, um, I think I was online the other day looking at things and I, I'm seeing all these sort of sweater shoulder cozy thing, which is essentially just sweaters where the bottoms have been cut off and you just have like the sleeves that you wrap on. And I'm like, but you don't need to buy one of those. I have a million sweaters that are, well, not a million, but any old sweater that's hanging around that I don't wear anymore. Maybe it's too tight. Maybe it's got a hole in it that can't be repaired. I could turn that into a shoulder cozy. And Emily's saying, oh, excellent. So Momo says, used an old CD for the base. I'd love it. I'd love to see a picture of this. I need to, I need to see it. I'm so excited. Um, Nicole acknowledging that creative clutter is a great term. Will that welcome to my life? And Emily about the needle felting tools saying, my hands don't like the stabbing motion anymore. Ah, yes. Okay. Got it. So it would be a small kit for someone who wants to try it. So if someone's out there who would like to try needle felting, I don't know, maybe uh, send like, like message Emily, or you can message us and we can find a way to connect you. Um, because needle felting is fun. It seems uh, getting that stabbing, the stabby stabby out instead of, you know, it's a nice way to take out your frustrations. It's a nice way to take out your frustrations uh, without hurting anyone. Although occasionally I did stab myself when I was needle felting. So just a, a heads up about that. But if there are any other folks out there, or perhaps you're a needle felter and you've run out of supplies. I know the fiber arts community is such a supportive one. Um, it's astonishing actually how supportive they are. I like to think it has something to do with the metaphor of things being woven together and becoming stronger through that. I think anyone who works with textiles or fiber arts, any of any weavers, anyone out there, it's, it's kind of a principle of your life as well, that you look for those connections and even like just knowing, knowing that they're there, even if you're, maybe you might not be directly connected to someone else, but things are still made stronger, even at a distance. Does that make sense? I don't know. Just thinking about a weaving and all the different threads that cross over and intersect. Even when it doesn't appear they do. I don't know. There's some beautiful metaphor in that, I suppose, somewhere. Amanda is saying that uh, she's looking for some cross-stitch projects. That's excellent. So that's good to know. If you're out there and you have some cross-stitch materials that you don't need anymore, Amanda would love to uh, give it a go. All right. Yeah, here we go. And I know that this Thursday evening, I'll give a shout out to Bee's project. We have another live stream coming up. So we are launching. It's a soft, it's a soft kind of launch. It's just an introducing. We're working out the bugs as we go, but it looks like every Thursday from here on forward, when we have wonderful humans who want to participate, we will be hosting another live stream on the Facebook page. We're calling it a Thursday night art jam. And it'll be hosted by different people each week, but it looks like there will be some regulars, some familiar faces from the studio. So for example, B will be hosting um, the first Thursday of every month. And I know B, her, like B's passion is hand lettering and fiber arts again. So if you're interested in cross stitch Amanda and you're on Facebook this Thursday, tune in and there'll be some interesting you know, as always, some interesting conversation, an opportunity to say hello, you know, to reach out if you feel like it, to not reach out if you don't feel like it, just, you know, hang back and do your thing and listen and watch. Same as this. But that's uh, this Thursday. And then I think Christine Weird is doing the following Thursday. So tune in 7 p.m. on Thursdays. Oh, interesting. So Shelly, I think is this in response to Amanda offering plastic mesh or plain rug making mesh? Or is that what you want? Maybe that's what you want. So how about this? If you want or are looking for something, maybe say looking for, and then whatever it is you're looking for, 
if you have something that you're offering, say offering whatever you have to share with the community. Should we try that? Who knows, maybe there will be a separate event or group that emerges from this so we can share things with one another. Hmm, excellent. And Barb, hello Barb. Barb's saying, so lovely to be with you lovely artists again. Visible mending is a wonderful way to explain what we are all doing right now. Oh, oh Barb. I'm just gonna have to take a moment to sit with that. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, Barb says, mending is healing, repairing, and growth. Love that, Mary. Well, I think you're the one who, wow. That just kind of swept me up there, Barb. Yeah, we're all in a process of mending, trying to heal repeatedly, stitching up those places that need to be stitched up within ourselves. And it is visible, isn't it? It's okay for it to be visible. Oh, excellent. So Wendy has a small kit for Amanda, a small cross stitch kit. So excellent. So hopefully these paths and these things will intertwine. So Amanda, I hope you saw that from Wendy. Uh, there's a cross stitch kit out there for you, if you like. And Amanda saying hello to Daniel. Hello, Daniel. How are you doing out there? Barb, that, wow, Barb. I'm going to need, I'm going to be journaling about that later. We're all visibly mending. So that's, that's a lovely way of looking at what we're going through, what we're experiencing, experiencing right now. And it's difficult, it's difficult to heal when we're still in the process, when we're still in the midst of it all, isn't it? We might not be able to heal from what we're experiencing right now in the moment, but we can definitely take care of ourselves, shore ourselves up, strengthen ourselves as much as we can. So that when we when we get through when we're on the other side there are opportunities to really to really truly mend and i don't mind if the mending is visible i don't mind if the scars are visible i think one of the premises of the visible mending movement that i love is that each in the world of fiber arts each item of clothing each item of textile tells a story. So what we are doing, what our scars do, what these moments of mending do, the visible pieces of mending, they tell stories about where we've been and who we are. And I think there's something truly, there's something to be honored within that. And let's say, so Shelly is looking for, thank you Shelly, so anyone out there, Shelly is looking for plastic mesh or rug making mesh. So for that rug hooking, the, where you can make fuzzy pillows and things like that. Perfect. And Daniel's hello, officially hello. Daniel's saying hello there. You are a wonderful person, fluorescent light shining bright. How do, <laughs> how's everybody else doing? Welcome to the living room. Oh, well, thank you for that, Daniel. As are you in the community. I think you are a bright and shining light. Daniel's another wonderful resource for folks who may not be aware, you know, using his lived experience and his insight and his compassion and kindness to connect with others and support others, to remind them of just how much wisdom and agency and power that they actually have in a world where it can be easy to feel, easy to be ma made, how is it? How am I trying to say this? We can be made to feel powerless. Um, those are kind of messages each of us receive in various ways to certain various extents in each of our days. But Daniel is one of those folks out there who gives me hope, who reminds me that we are not powerless, that we can make change. Of course, the change always starts with the change we make in ourselves. Uh, and I love that he's out there and doing that thing, helping folks remember that. Not only remember that, but helping them take action and create uh, wonderful things within their own lives using what we have because that's all we can do sometimes is make do with what we have and make amazing things with that right you don't need a lot to make really meaningful change whether it's in the world or in our own lives I don't think so all right now what am I going to do with this oh let's go for it I'm just gonna I'm playing I don't know what I'm doing folks I'm just playing Let's see, here we go. Hmm. 
This is the part of the afternoon where I just start uh, making my own soundtrack. Oh, this is fun. I wasn't sure how these, the paper with the plaster, uh, for lack of a better term, embossing, would cut. I was worried that the plaster would flake off, but it doesn't. That's a that it's the little things in life, right? It's the little things. Let's see. Excellent. So Amanda, there's lots of awesome resources out there. I'm glad that you saw that. And thank you folks who are offering and sharing and doing your best to figure out how to keep people connected, how to people keep people creative. It's in the simple things sometimes, isn't it? Now these are beginning to feel like clouds for me. Maybe that's what it is. Ah, let's give it a go. What's going on the page? I want to find something else first. Ha ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. I've been reduced to just making sounds, but that's okay. Not reduced, just it's what I'm doing. There we go. Do I? Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I'm going to say, Danielle, I think if you're still out there, Danielle, super awesome student. Maybe we can figure out a way to do that, to create some kind of page where people can post what they need, what they're looking for. Or maybe it's just an event every week on Facebook that people can visit. So it doesn't have to be too serious or fancy. So I know it's difficult for folks to get around and maybe it's something that we can integrate into our errands, you know, when we have our daily errand run or things like that. Yeah, maybe. Oh, Momo was asking a question to, oh, let's see. Oh, I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, wow. Danielle saying, I've recently taken up the idea of bullet journaling as a new creative expression tool. So far, it's interesting. I really enjoy bullet journaling too. Um, Momo was asking, what is bullet journaling? It's a good question. Danielle, you can give all the details about this, but, um, and perhaps it's another, oh, perhaps it's another workshop. Uh, bullet journaling is, is, Who's it? I think it's a gentleman, a person named Ryder Carroll or Carol Ryder, Ryder Carroll, who kind of formalized the process. Um, I like to think of it like at its base form, like a glorified to-do list where you're creating a, a set of kind of like, it's a way of organizing your thoughts. I think that's the good way to say it. A way of organizing your thoughts, uh, using symbols and different kind of processes to um, sort of monitor things, engage things. So it could be as simple as having a, a to-do list where uh, you have a symbol beside that represent different kinds of tasks. So you might have a symbol representing events and a different symbol representing tasks and then a qualifier to help let you know and remind you at a glance which are essential tasks, which ones are urgent, which ones can be pushed to the next day if you don't get it done in time. So that at its, like that's a very, very basic explanation. There is a bullet journaling website that folks can go to um, where they share techniques and resources. The other thing that's interesting about it that I, I suppose is important uh, for folks who do it, it uses a grid paper, like paper with a grid of dots on it. 
So do I have one on hand here? I do. Let's see. I'll reach over. Just taking a little break to talk about bullet journaling. So let's see here. Like a bullet journal, for example, maybe I don't have the to-do list in here, but so you see like it's lots of different things that you can include. So there's a, um, it also expands away from to-do lists, but into things like self-care habit trackers or mood trackers. I'm not sure if the grid page will show if I hold it up to the camera. Do, 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 do. I don't know. Does that register at all? Maybe not. Maybe not. But it's essentially a graph made out of dots, a grid out of dots that you can uh, fill in and use to shape your ideas. So here, Danielle's having an excellent, he's sharing an excellent example of what it is. Bullet journaling is kind of like mini scrapbooking sort of. Yeah, that's another great way of describing it. Um, any number of things. I've seen people use it as a mood tracker, a calendar, a to-do list to keep track of TV shows, movies, books, etc. Excellent. So that's Danielle. That's a great explanation right there. And Momo's saying the dots did show up. So I'm glad for that. Yeah, it's a, another way of journaling and organizing your thoughts. Yes, please. Obviously, I have something in me that's drawn to circles today. I particularly enjoy things like the mood tracker and the self-care habit tracker. For folks who are out there who do art journaling or any kind of um, like a regular practice in journaling, it's a really useful tool. I'm not as, I don't do it as regularly as I could. So I find that um, I do it when I need to, I do it when I want to. It's one of those things that if it, for me anyways, if it feels like homework, I won't do it. It needs to feel like it's a part of my day, something that is benefiting me, something I enjoy. Um, but I just encourage anyone who's doing bullet journaling to just be gentle with yourself and not, you know, do it when it feels right to you. Use it in the way that works for you. There's some people who use it every single day. There are others who turn to it occasionally. It's all, it all counts. It's all important. Maybe that's where that can go now. Let's see, something else. And Nicole says, oh, interesting. So Danielle doesn't have a grid paper book, just uh, using a small sketchbook. Exactly. That's a, So you can turn any book into um, a bullet journal book. It is fun to have the grids there, like the grid of dots there for you, if you like. And I know that you can, just like any journal, you can buy really super expensive, shiny, fancy journals, or you can buy really simple ones. Bullet journals are now available lots of different places. I think I picked mine up at the local dollar store, so they're becoming more affordable now as well, which is interesting. But yeah, another circle or an oval circle. That's close enough. And Nicole saying, just bought myself a unique calendar called a holiday every day. Oh, that sounds lovely. Holiday every day. It shows all of the weird days of the year. Happy National Carrot Cake Day, everyone. <laughs> and Carlos says, every day should be National Carrot Cake Day. <laughs> I agree. I, I Why not? <laughs> there are so many. Carrot cake. Uh, there's got to be a whole year of recipes for different kinds of carrot cakes out there. We could celebrate carrot cake every single day if we wanted to. Why not? And I see Amanda is just mentioning if folks do have supplies that they can drop to her or exchange for her, at, um, if you could personal send her a personal message, a direct message as you will or whatever, that would be lovely and amazing. So thank you for that. And Carlos is, oh, Carlos following up on the bullet journaling. Bullet journaling is awesome, but be kind with it. Exactly. Yeah. For me, there was a point where it became a chore because I didn't do it every day. And I thought I needed to, when I realized it could dip in, I could dip in and out of using it as, and when it felt, it became much more fun and a calming process. That's exactly, yep. That's, that's it, Carlos. That's exactly what I was trying to explain for my own self too. As soon as it begins to feel like, as soon as I have that resistance against it, I have to back off and remind myself that I'm, it's a tool for myself. It doesn't, it's not managing me. I'm managing it. I can step away whenever I want to. Um, but 
it can be really, really fun. It can be really helpful. I remember the first time I looked through a completed um, mood tracker just to look at what my moods had been every day. And I love it because it's really art-based and it's really creative. It can be as creative as you want it to be or as simple as you want it to be. Um, but I used color and shape to inform my mood tracker and looking back over it after the month was complete just to see the different colors of my month and the different uh, kind of the days where things overlapped or you know the number of days where I felt certain things it was a really interesting document uh, just gauging my health my mental health uh, it was interesting to link certain days with different events that had happened in my life the cause and effect of things so if you're someone out there and you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, yes, I, I like that. I think that would be for me. Then it might, you might want to check it out. You might want to explore it. But exactly like Carlos says, if it feels like a chore, you know, step away, take a break, do something that does bring you joy. Marta, hello, Marta. Welcome, Marta. Another one of our fabulous placement students. Yay. I just got into calligraphy and I'm trying to bring my handwriting up a notch. Dot journals are great. Yeah, for folk, like for those hand lettering folks. Uh, dot journals, the grid journals can be super helpful. I know that B uses it, uh, different kinds of graph paper and dotted grid paper in her hand lettering too. Oh, Marta, I don't think you've met B yet. I can't wait to introduce you virtually. Um, because that's uh, one of B's passions, hand lettering and calligraphy. And if you want, they're going to be hosting on Thursday, every Thursday, this Thursday night, the first Thursday of every month, hosting uh, an art jam, 7 p.m. Thursday evenings, folks. That's when we have another live stream on our Facebook. So feel free to join us this Thursday or join B. B will be the face here. I, my face won't be here. You'll have a break from my face, everybody. Mm. I know that I've got some other pieces over here. Let's see. And Marta, how are you doing today? Again, any students out there, and I guess, you know, by extension, any teachers out there, this must be an interesting time. I'm wishing you all the wellness, all the peace, all the contentment. Reminding you to take care of yourselves the best that you can. That's all we can do. Just do the best to take care of ourselves. Here. I really like that. I wish I had more foil now. Don't want that to be there. Don't want that to be there. Do, 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 do. Don't want this to be there. Mm -hmm. Layer it on and let's see what happens. I have a feeling that this will become the background for something else that I'm working on. And I remember I put down that circle on the page at the very beginning. And I can't quite remember why I did that. I think I wanted to fill the circle, but now I'm just filling the page. I'm going to let it happen. So many of the projects I do on here find their way into other projects that I do down the line. I like that. I like the evolution of that. It gives me an opportunity to make new projects as they come up, to explore new techniques. Again, welcome to folks if you're just tuning in now. Oh, and Carlos, I was just going to say, uh, Carlos is saying, alas, my lovelies, I need to sign out for now, but it's been beautiful hanging out with you all. Thanks for the art and the heart, y'all. Have a fantastic and safe week. And thanks for creating this space, Mary. Oh, me. Well, you're welcome. Uh, big high fives to y'all, you magnificent works of art. Catch you later. Catch you later, Carlos. Thank you for that beautiful sign-off message. That's lovely. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Shelly. Shelly, apologizing for being a whiner. I love this group, Shelly says. And Shelly, you are not a whiner. So for anyone who feels the need or the desire to pull the weeds, anyone who perhaps has a rough moment, uh, a little hiccup in feeling whatever they're feeling, it's okay to feel what you feel. It's okay to take care of yourself. It's okay to ask for what you need as well. No such thing as whiners. I think we're all just learning how to ask for what we need and sometimes it doesn't come naturally. It doesn't come naturally for me. So you know what? If things feel a little awkward sometimes, that's okay. If things feel a little strained, that's okay too. All we're asking, any of, we're asking ourselves, that's what we're doing, I think, is to be kind to ourselves, be gentle with yourselves, extend that same kindness to yourself that you would to someone else. And Shelly, I know you'd extend that kindness to others. I absolutely know that. So I invite you to extend it to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be kind. And Marta saying, I'm good. Fantastic. Marta saying, hello everyone. Was running around all day today with my puppy. Oh, he needs all the attention. I hope your puppy's okay. You have such a cute puppy, Marta. Um, I keep encouraging Marta to just, you know, I'm inviting her to make a video just with her puppy. I think people would really like that, but I know that's, you know, I don't know what kind of grades you get for that. I don't know if that's a part of the curriculum at uh, <laughs> Ontario Tech U. <laughs> and Marma's saying, gotta go too. Lovely to catch up with you. Until next time, stay safe and warm y'all. Much love. Oh, much love to you too, Momo. Thank you for sharing space with us space with us today. And Nicole is, ah, oh, my Shit Creek stalls can stand now. Fantastic. Nicole has crocheted, or are you talking about some different dolls? You, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, you crocheted the entire cast of Shit's Creek, uh, which is one of my favorite shows. It wasn't at first, but boy, when I gave it a chance, I fell in love with everything about it. If anyone is looking for a really heartwarming, heartful, uh, love, like love-filled space on like in the world of media today, that's a great place to start. With Schitt's Creek, it's such a loving, generous show. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily come across that way at first. So if you're like me, you might need to give it two or three episodes to warm into it and be hooked, but such a good show. And oh, last week, Nicole designed your own crochet pattern for the first time. Congratulations. Is there anyone else out there who crochets their own patterns? I'd love to hear if you do. What is that? This is such a, this piece is taking me somewhere, but I don't know where. This is helping me get through all my scraps in my collage file. Hmm. And I think I was in the process of welcoming folks who might be tuning in during the last half hour, last 20 minutes of, of our live stream today. Thank you to everyone who's joining us. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for contributing your creative energy, your honesty, just you. Thank you for being here with your you-ness. And yes, I'm making you-ness a word. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I know things are not easy out there for folks right now. I know there's a lot of things that are coming at us that we're asked to deal with every single day. Again, I wanna remind folks just how well they're doing, even on the days where you don't feel like you're doing well at all. You're here, you're hanging in there, you're getting through. And if you're here, even if you're listening, that also means you're giving yourself space and time to connect with others, even at a distance, and that's okay. I applaud that. I think it's worthwhile to applaud.
Some days it's the little things. Getting out of bed. Having a shower. Giving ourselves space to cry. Permission to just be. Those are the things. Sometimes that are award worthy in these strange and uncertain times we're in. So if you're doing that, if you're managing to take care of yourself, if you're managing to find time in your day to love yourself, good for you. And Lauren's saying in her crocheting that you don't use patterns. Does that count? I think so. I think you're creating patterns on the fly. Excellent. And that's a, I definitely envy that, that process. Oh, there's a brain. That's going in the collage. <laughs> and Nicole with her holiday a day calendar. I didn't even know such a calendar existed. How fabulous is that? Uh, holiday a day, if folks are interested, if you want to know, tomorrow, February the 4th, is homemade soup day. So if you're looking for something to celebrate, why not celebrate homemade soup day? <laughs> oh lovely Laura says showered and then went back to bed and you're resting that counts what a beautiful gift to yourself yeah there are days like that folks we all have them we all have them we all have them I think that's a nice thing to remember sometimes too. Even the folks out there who look like they're all together, like they've got it all going on. They have days like this too. It's helpful to remember that sometimes, that we're all humans. We're all struggling in one way or another, not struggling all the time, not suffering all the time. Just doing our best. And it's not always pretty, but it's always okay. And again, if you do need to reach out for those supports, if you're feeling especially dark or struggling and you're just not sure what to do, remember that it's okay to ask for help. Remember that it's okay to ask for what you need. Give yourself permission to check in with someone. Call a friend. If you need to call a hotline, we've got some amazing supports in Durham Region. I know there are other supports in other places too. Reach out, connect. Don't be afraid to make space for yourself and to take up space. Your wellness matters. And let's see, Shelly's saying, very excited for next Wednesday. Oh, pop-up art studio, it's a special day for me. You're right, Shelly, and thank you for the reminder. Let's see, like around 10 minutes to go before this live stream ends, but for those who are here, spread the word. Next Wednesday, not only is it Shelly's birthday, uh, but in Shelly's honor, and because we wanted to do it for a long time, we are having clay day, so. Get yourself some clay, make yourself some clay. We'll be sharing some recipes for some homemade doughs and clays that you can make with some materials you might already have around the house. And bring your clay, bring your plasticine, bring whatever you might have on hand. And we shall play with clay next Wednesday. Thanks for the reminder, Shelley. Oh, and I took, yeah, Danielle. Shelley, you can explain how, what else, how else this day is special, but that's, that's what I'm remembering, but it's a special in a lot of other ways for you, I imagine, too, specifically. All right. And I know there are other birthdays out there. I know that there are other special days for folks, too. If you have a special day coming up, or if you'd like us to do something special, a certain theme or activity, one of these Wednesdays for you, please let us know. 
Why not? Let's start celebrating one another because we can. <laughs> and Marta's saying, how exciting, you're a fellow Aquarius. Oh, Marta's birthday is on February 15th. Oh my goodness, all right. So a lot to celebrate this month. So I know that tomorrow is homemade soup day. But I don't want to get people too, too excited as we're wrapping up here. But in addition to homemade soup day being tomorrow, it looks like we have some other special days coming up this month, including birthdays. Of course, it's Black History Month as well. So I feel like there's so much to celebrate there and honor and the living room will be sharing quotes from different artists from uh, communities of color this month to celebrate and honor the different wisdom uh, and the, the different creative gifts that they've brought into the world for us, for the world, the things they do that shape culture in our communities. There's a lot to celebrate this month. There we go. But I do like that. If there are folks out there and you have things you want to celebrate or you have different themes or activities you'd like to see uh, happen, perhaps you'd like to suggest activities that we can all participate in, um, wherever we might be, let me know. Please let me know. Oh, Prin, hello. A bit late, but hello. Never too late. It's always good to see you. I saw you tune in for the live stream on Tuesday as well, and then it all went glitchy. But uh, it reminded me that 11 a.m. for a live stream is probably much better for folks who are in the UK, so. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to introduce some more morning activities <laughs> for folks. And Teresa, hello, hello as well, Teresa. How are you? We were just mentioning if there are activities or things that uh, people would like to explore or experiment with to let us know. If you'd like to see me try different things on the live stream, please feel free to suggest them because next Wednesday, uh, we're having a clay day, having a clay play day. Let's see, is that good or do I wanna do a little bit more of this? It's always nice when someone has a suggestion. It, and then we can all gather supplies ahead of time, experiment, and uh, just do that creative thing together. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Oh yeah, oh thanks Prim, Prim was saying it was cool. I, yeah, I chatted with Kingsley Swim, who's just this extraordinary human being. Some of you in the living room community might be familiar with Kingsley. In fact, they helped us in our last, uh, the last big fundraiser we were able to have. Our, uh, our take on the Taskmaster fundraiser. We did an artist version of that. And Kingsley was uh, one of our, our judges and was just so fierce, so fabulous. Um, just a, a really cool human being. Um, and uh, they, they've moved and we haven't had a chance to connect and catch up. They're living in Ottawa these days, but still doing amazing things in their community. It was such a great chat and then uh, so apologies to anyone out there who might have tuned in afterwards when it was archived to listen to it. It just glitched up midway through. So I might have to have, I might have to schedule another follow-up chat with Kingsley just to revisit some of the things we were talking about um, and to catch up on where she's at. Yeah, an extraordinary human being. And Prin, yeah, I totally should introduce you to I think... If you ever see, yeah, if you ever see me chatting with someone on a Tuesday, if there's anyone out there, if you'd like to, you know, feel free to reach out and connect with people that inspire you, that are, uh, that are interesting to you. If their voice resonates with yours, please don't, like, feel free to reach out and let them know. I feel as artists and makers, we sometimes forget to do that. We forget to appreciate other, um, to let them know that their work or their, their life, that they're having an impact on what we do, um, it's also a very Canadian thing as well, I think. We don't appreciate until perhaps it's too late. 
So definitely, if there's someone out there who's making a difference in your world through how they're living, what they're creating, what they're sharing, let them know. I think we can big each other up from time to time. We can let one another know the impact that we're having. And I know I always appreciate it when I hear from folks. So yeah, thank you. Thank you to everyone out there doing all their creative, all their creative things, making the world a better place, one moment at a time, one creation at a time. And it's, let's see, creating this circular, this thing, this creation. I'm not sure what it is, a background maybe to be built upon even further in the weeks ahead. Just need something else, but what? Hmm. Always in the last few minutes. I'm looking for that thing. It might be. And as always, if I don't find it, that's okay. I'll come back to it. I feel like I need something darker. And Prin, what are you working on these days? We have such exciting makers and creators with us at all times it's I feel lucky to be in this position where I can you know get to know so many interesting new makers from all over <laughs> this is darker not lighter oh folks one of those moments. Aha. So as with many of my creative projects, I'll probably continue this after the live stream. I'm just going to add in, add in, add in until it feels right. It's like a piece inspired by winter weather and all the layers we put on every day to go outside. So some more layers like that, and then it'll be in a place to work with. But for now, I think it'll have to be that, she says as she goes to cut another circle. Why circles? I don't know. And Prin saying, you started some new work, still at the wall. <laughs> I bet I, I still at the wall you hit, but just going with it. Yeah, that's all we can do. That's all we can do sometimes. That wall. That wall, huh? <laughs> I think that was a theme in a conversation I was having with Kingsley, actually. we That theme, that metaphor of the wall came up when we were talking together as well. Oh, I think it might have been towards the end of the conversation, but we had a similar understanding that we came to. Oh yes, yeah, so a similar understanding about the wall and, and sometimes as a creator myself, as someone who works in community and wants to see things done, it's very easy to, you know, just try and take whatever momentum I have to go through the wall or to figure out a way around it or under it or over it. But um, sometimes it is just about leaning against the wall, just using it as a resource, as a support to take a breath and recalibrate a little bit. So interesting that that's that, image that idea of the wall has been coming up quite a bit lately huh, interesting and Prin, yes indeed still need to start growing some plants from last week's convo absolutely i think there's few things in the world that feel better that feel i don't know how to explain it growing something from seed is such a beautiful and powerful thing yeah, it's amazing. So yeah, seed catalog time, folks. Thinking about what you need or what you want in your garden. Whether it's a garden on your windowsill, on your porch, in your alleyway, on your doorstop. There's plenty of ways to grow things and plenty of space once you get creative. Grow things just about anywhere. All right. 
that's I'm going to I'm going I could continue this forever, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to take a rest for now and let this be and revisit it probably in a few days so I can look at it with fresh eyes, see what's here and talk to it and ask it what it needs. Um, yeah, but that's a that's a good place to be. Thank you so much, folks, for allowing me to spend time with you today for let's take a little closer look at this and see. Thank you for letting me spend time with you. Thank you for uh, allowing me just to fill this page with color and shape with you. It's, uh, I like how I've been growing and getting a little bigger and getting a little bolder with the creative things I've been doing with you folks. Uh, I appreciate that loads. I think without this time spent with you, I may not make this time for myself because again, it's hard to practice what you preach sometimes. We're so much kinder to other people than we are to ourselves. Um, so thank you. You keep me accountable, everyone. Thank you for being a part of my creative community. Oh, thank you. And thank you, Teresa. I love your art too. I think we need a big, big old showcase, a community show and tell. So keep an eye out for that too. I might be doing maybe a live stream where we take turns logging onto Facebook or like Instagram maybe and sharing like holding up our work for everyone to see. Maybe something like that. We accidentally had one of those days a few weeks ago when um, I think when Kingsley first had to cancel. No, I know what it was. It was when we couldn't get Laura onto the live stream. And Laura, I'm still thinking of ways to get you back on. But we, I do want to showcase what you're doing and who you are because you're fabulous. Um, but that turned into an accidental show and tell day. But I'd like to do it intentionally. So keep an eye out for something like that coming your way soon where we can perhaps swap in and out on Instagram and highlight all the beautiful things that are happening out there in the world and just see one another's faces for a little while, even if it's just for a few minutes. But it's always nice to see everyone. It's always nice to connect in community. And again, thank you for making time for me. Thank you for making time for yourself to be here in the virtual art hive. You're awesome. Take care of yourselves. Trust that you can't go wrong if you start with yourself, taking care of yourself, making yourself a priority in your day. What's that saying again? You can't pour from an empty cup. That's a good one. So never doubt. When in doubt, take care of yourself first. When in doubt, tend to those spots in yourself that need tending. Take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. Treat yourself like an excellent friend. Yeah? Can we try that? I'm going to try it too. Oh, Jill, so nice to see you too. Aw, oh, thanks everyone. What a lovely afternoon. Um, and again, Check out tomorrow, Thursday, a video about the comfort characters activity on Facebook from our student Danielle. And this Friday, the next activity coming up from our other placement student about music. And tomorrow night, Thursday night on Facebook, another live stream art jam. This one with V at 7 p.m. in the evening on our Facebook page. If you're interested to hang out and create with someone uh, when it's dark outside, that's the time to do it. So make sure to tune in, say hi to V and show her some love and bring along your fiber arts, your textile arts. I think that's what B will be working on to start, but we'll see. Hand lettering and textile arts, you can't go wrong. But until we can connect and create again in person, as always, I look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online. Thanks for being out there, folks, and sharing creative space with me. Take care of yourselves, stay safe. <sighs> and know that you're not alone. <laughs> All right, everyone, have a great, great day. Bye. <laughs>